Hi, welcome back to the channel. So on this video, we're going to be showing proper tax strip placement, showing exactly how much space you need between the tax strip and the baseboard for different types of carpet. So if you're a floor guy or a handyman that runs into this type of situation from time to time, consider subscribing. With that being said, let's jump right into the video. So in this video, I have two totally different types of carpet to do this demonstration with. One piece of carpet we got right here is a really nice, uh, pretty thick plush carpet. It's nice and tall. It's got a nice thick plush nap on it. And the other piece is just your thin old commercial carpet. That is a dramatic difference from the nice plush here. So there's going to be two uh, totally different types of carpet to do this demonstration with. Also in this video, we're going to be showing how close you need to have your tack strip when the baseboard is raised up off of the floor and when the baseboard is flush on the floor because there is a difference. Okay, so what we're going to be using first here is we're going to use this nice thick plush carpet to uh, go with it first. And what I want to do, this is going to be okay. Uh, approximately three eighths of an inch. I'll, I'll put this down here and then we'll put a tape measure on it to see just how far it is after we get it down there. Okay, so what the gap that we got right there is um, is actually just right at three eighths of an inch. That's exactly what I was thinking it should be. And the way that I did gauge that was from my finger width. As I stick my finger in here, in between the tack strip and the baseboard and, and to hammer it like that. If I can get my finger in there and just touch the floor. Now, um, I don't want to have, I don't want to be able to like get my finger way down on the floor like that. I want to just be able to push it down in there tightly to where it just does touch the subfloor between the gap of the, which the space between the tack strip and the baseboard is actually called the gully. So if you hear me refer to it to that, that's what I'm talking about. This is the gully right here, the space in between the tack strip and the baseboard. And with a nice plush carpet such as this, this is going to work out just fine. And with the baseboard on the floor in this demonstration. So that is exactly how we want to do it. One thing that we want to definitely keep in mind is whenever we're placing our tack strip, we want it close enough to the baseboard to where whenever we tuck our carpet down in there, it actually creases the carpet down in that gully right there, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and trim and pack this, and we'll see exactly um, how it looks like this with our tack strip, about 3 eighths of an inch, just where I can touch the subfloor with my finger reaching through the tack strip right there. So the purpose of having the tack strip close to the baseboard right there, we want it just close enough to where whenever you tuck your carpet in there, it's going to crunch it down in there. And I'm going to try to hold this back, the fiber back right here, so you can actually see how the backing does right there. Okay. Let's see if I can get a look at that. Let me tuck this. I'm going to try to pull that nap back right there so you can see the backing of that. So if you notice the backing right here, the backing of the carpet, it goes down and kind of kind of makes an L shape right there. It goes down and directly to the baseboard right there. That is absolutely perfect right there, okay? With this nice thick carpet, that's exactly what you want right there, okay? So because the backing is crunched in there just like that so whenever i pull notice how it don't even try to give at all it just tightens up but it does not try to lift up out of the gully whatsoever so whenever you get a stretch this carpet is going to stay right there okay it's not going to pull away or pull off or anything like that okay so for a nice for a nice thick carpet a uh, uh Nice plush carpet, about three eighths of an inch is going to be absolutely perfect because it's got a nice tight little fit down between the tack strip and the baseboard. Okay, so I did not even move the tack strip whatsoever. We still have about three eighths of an inch 
um, gully from the tack strip to the baseboard and now we are going to use the commercial carpet and we're going to see if that does just the same okay so again I'm just going to trim and tuck it Okay, so we got it trimmed. Now let's see how this acts. Okay, so already right off the bat, I can already see a difference with that. Um, you can see the backing, because this is a thinner carpet, you can see that the backing just kind of goes right down in there like that. It don't necessarily grab a hold on that. I'm gonna give it a tug. And we're going to see if it's going to hold or if it's going to pull off. Okay, so look at that. Did you see that? That is definitely pulling off right there. So that tells me that we need to have our tack strip just a little bit closer with the commercial carpet, okay? So I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to pick the tack strip up, scoot it where it needs to be, and then we're going to do this exact same thing again, okay? Okay, so I've got me another piece of tack strip here. Um, and pretty much the way you can judge how close you're gonna need your tack strip is, you can go by the thickness of the carpet right here, okay? Let's look, at, let's take a look right here. So you can see how thick or how thin that this carpet is. So that's gonna let you know that you need a small gully between your tack strip and baseboard. If it is too much, you've seen what happens right there. It did not compress it, it did not pinch it in the gully there because there was so much of a gully, so much of a gap between the tack strip and base, it was not able to pinch it and bind it down in there, okay? So with the thinner the carpet, the closer the tack strip needs to be. So if you've not been doing this long or you wanted, or if you're a handyman and you wanna figure out how close you should have your tack strip, before you go nailing it and trying it and testing it and stuff like that, go by the thickness of your carpet. However thick your carpet is here, the thickness here, that's how far you need to have your tack strip from the baseboard, the thickness of the carpet. Now that is only on thin carpets, okay? If we're working with this great big thick carpet right here, this is probably a half inch or five eighths or something tall. We definitely do not want our tack strip that far away in any circumstance, okay? Only on the thin carpet does that work that way. Okay, so I wanna take a piece of this old carpet here, just this scrap carpet, and show you guys. Look at there. That is absolutely just enough room for the carpet to fit right down between the tack strip and the gully. I, I just kinda eyeballed that, but that's actually what you want right there. That's the exact thickness you want your tack strip to be on a thinner carpet. And again, we're gonna trim and tuck this. Okay, I've done that corner like that to keep it from getting all stringy. Now, with this bend like that, I can already tell that it's gonna do just what the other carpet did a while ago since we got it nice and close here now this backing is going to act the exact same way as it did a while ago with the thick carpet okay let's see if we can get a little bit of look right here So look at that. Notice it does go down and kind of curve in the shape of an L just like that other carpet did a while ago. I'm going to keep you nice and close here and we're going to check as I pull and see what happens. Just like if I was to stretch. Okay, look at that. 
So the main thing you want to look for whenever you're doing this is make sure that your carpet, whenever you tuck it down behind the nap, I mean down behind the tack strip, it's going to mash in there tight enough to where it actually crinkles the carpet and it pinches it and that's going to give it a nice tight hold. So when you do stretch away from that piece of baseboard, your carpet's going to be stuck because it's pinched in there and whenever you pull it, it's actually only going to bite down on those tack strip nails better, okay? Okay, we've seen what it looks like right. Now let's see what it looks like wrong and how it acts when it's wrong, okay? So I'm going to place the tack strip about 5 eighths, 3 quarters of an inch away like I see it a lot. And we'll see how it acts and how it looks with this low profile commercial carpet, okay? So again, I'm going to pull this tack strip up. Go ahead and install me a piece like we see it so often in this trade. Okay, so look at there. That's actually... Uh, about five eighths of an inch. That's not really dramatic. I've definitely seen it further than that So we're gonna go with that even I just kind of thought wow, that's pretty far as I was putting it down there So we're gonna go with that and see exactly how that does and that is like I said not even that dramatic And in case you're wondering, I am getting all of these cut about the same length, okay? I'm not cutting any longer or any shorter for any demonstration purposes, okay? This is strictly all how it should be on a regular basis, okay? And that right there should be good enough. I want to make my point about this that it's definitely too far away. So right off the bat, you can see this big dip down right there. <laughs> right here in the gully so here's the edge of the tack strip and here it it goes swoop so from the tack strip over you have a big swoop down there okay so that by no means is acceptable i mean it looks just like a waterfall or something right there that will not work that don't even look good as a visual your customer will not be happy with that okay so once again, I'm going to give it just a tug like I have been doing, and we're going to see if that holds or if it don't hold, okay? Okay, you automatically, did you notice that just came right up out of the gully there? See that? So I'll do it again. Okay. I'll even hold it like I did a while ago, and I'm going to pull once again. Look at that. So it has no pinch. There's no pinch whatsoever down behind the goalie of mashing that in there, okay? You can cut it longer and say, well, I'll cut it longer and that way it'll pinch. If you cut it longer, it's just going to be all bunched up and look worse than it already does right here. So this, that would be uh, significantly longer. See what you're left with. It's just all bunched up there, okay? There's absolutely nothing professional about that at all, okay? So that is not acceptable. Okay, so as we can see right there, that looks absolutely horrible. Okay, so now I got the tack strip installed with uh, the baseboard raised up on the commercial carpet. Uh, this is pretty much going to cover all carpets. It's going to be the exact same. I'm using the commercial carpet because it is going to show any um, imperfections more dramatic than a nice fluffy carpet. But the principle is going to be all the same for all carpets, okay? So, I do have the baseboard raised up as you can see there. And I'm going to get a straight down shot at that and let you see look how close that is that is probably a little over an eighth maybe three sixteenths maybe even less than that so it is close enough where this commercial carpet will not drop down behind there so because it is raised up i did scoot it a little closer the gully is definitely more narrow here than it was when the baseboard was on the floor and the reason for that is because the carpet when it's tucked under there it's actually not going to go against the baseboard it's going to go underneath there so therefore um, we need to get this we need to get this space right here between the bottom of the baseboard 
and the top of the tack strip needs to fit just like that so that when it's laying down there you get a nice pretty look just like that okay if the tack strip was further it would be way more dramatic okay so with that being said let me go ahead and trim and pack this and we'll see what happens okay the, i do want to point this out too um since the baseboards are raised up you're not going to want to trim this carpet here as short as you did a while ago when the tack strip is on the floor you're going to want to cut it just a little bit longer that way it can go underneath there okay but also uh, when it does go under there you don't want it so long that it's going to go all the way under here and hit the back hit the uh two by four right there underneath so if it's more than a half inch and it comes back here and hits the two by four right here it's just going to still again look all bunched up up here because it's mashing right here on the base i mean on the two by four okay so look at here i did trim that just a little longer and let's see what happens okay Now that has a nice tight fit so the pinch does not come from uh, the goalie size necessarily now the pinch is coming from the bottom of the base down on the tack strip okay I cut that little bit right there with my knife so that now let's give it the pull test just like we were stretching and see what happens okay look at that see that that is beautiful it's staying really good as I'm pulling on it, we didn't have to worry about it pulling out from the baseboard so many times. I mean, almost always, you'll see installers doing that, raking it down on the tack strip, using a hammer, a hatchet, or whatever, and mashing their carpet down on the tack strip pins just like that. However, if you get your tack strip placed in the proper position like it should just like I've demonstrated here in this video there's not going to be a need for that so if you install your tack strip properly you're not going to have the need for raking it down on the pins and stuff like that like I just demonstrated it's naturally going to get a hold on that tack strip on the pins because it is such it is compressed in there in such a way that it's already getting a bite on the pins and it's not going to pull away so a lot of people don't put enough emphasis on the tack strip placement so often probably 75 more than that probably 95 percent of tack strip that i see already installed is installed incorrectly very rare do you see in a uh, tack strip installed correctly and if you are doing a stretching commercial just like we was working with here very crucial that you get your tack strip right okay so I'm not sure if you noticed, so I want to point it out when I just tucked that tack strip, when I just tucked that commercial carpet there uh, in the gully under the baseboard with the baseboard raised up, I did not have to mash it on the tack strip, rake it on there with a hatchet, with a hammer, with my stair tool. I didn't have to do any kind of tuck mashing it on the tack strip pins at all, okay, because the tack strip was in the proper placement, okay, that is key. Okay, one more demonstration. I want to show how this commercial carpet is going to act if we place the tack strip too far away with the baseboards raised up, okay? And you'll see why it is so important to get this tack strip in the right place, especially, especially on commercial carpet. Okay, so looking straight down on it, you can see that we are 5 eighths of an inch away just as we was with the plush carpet. It may look a bit more dramatic from a side view. That's because it is dramatic, okay? This is by all means too far away for a commercial carpet, okay? I'm fixing to trim and tuck this and show you once again why it's a bad idea and why it is not good to do that. So the baseboards are raised up, so I am going to uh, trim 
this just a little bit long, just as I did a while ago. That way it will go under the baseboard, but not touch the two by four like we talked about a while ago, okay? I am cutting this with my knife, that way it don't string out and make a bunch of frays and stuff like that. I want this to be able to be really visible for you guys to see. So that's why I'm doing that with my knife. Okay. So now I have this trimmed and we're going to tuck it. See that it went under there nicely. Okay. I did a video here a while back um, called possibly the worst carpet job ever or something along those lines. And this was the case all over the job okay the tack strip was definitely too far back okay let me show you this right off the bat let me go ahead and tuck all this and the job that i showed was not even with commercial carpet it was with a regular carpet okay but this was the case the tack strip was too far away if you'll notice right there it looks like the carpet's actually short you can see the baseboard is up above the carpet. The carpet's not even touching. Um, let's see, same thing here. Here, there's black spots. It looks dark. Whenever I actually stretch on this, it's actually gonna pull down even tighter and make that look worse, okay? As you can see, it's almost right here. The edge of the carpet is just like almost flat down, okay? You can see the back of it. It's not touching the two by four. It actually stops just maybe an eighth inch right there. Right where my pinpoint is, is actually the back of the carpet. It's not touching the 2 by 4 which would be in the wall. So let's pull on the carpet. You can plainly see, I mean, it's got plenty of slack right there where it's just coming down gradually, okay? So that's why. And let's pull on it and see what happens. We're even going to... We're even going to take and, like people do, we're going to do that. Now, let's pull on it and see what happens. Okay. Okay. Now, I want to point this out. So, it held because I've mashed it down on the tack strip. But now that it's pulled tight, now look at that. Okay, so I wanted to point out how that looks right there. It definitely pulled it down. Whenever I stretched on it and pulled it tight, you can definitely see I grabbed it with two hands right here on this edge. I grabbed a hand there and a hand there and pulled it tight. And because of that, it pulled down on the pins just like I was explaining a while ago. And now look at it. It looks like the carpet is short. It looks like the baseboard is way too high. Look over there. I did not pull on that side, so that still looks okay whenever I do pull on that. Watch this. I'll do the same thing. I'll do it right here while you're sitting and watching, okay? So I'll rake that with my stair tool so it don't come off just like I did a while ago. You can hear that? Okay. So that already, look at that already. That already made a huge difference because it's down on the strip now. Look at that. And I just grabbed it and pulled it. Now, because it is down on the strip, now look at that right there. A while ago, it was actually floating above the strip on the tacks. But now that the tacks are pushed in the carpet as it has to be for you to get a stretch. Look at that now. Okay? So, that is definitely not going to fly, okay? You could scoot your tack strip closer and completely avoid this, okay? Okay, so I hope this video helped. Uh, maybe some of the new guys in the trade or the handyman that just wants to go out and do a little bit of his own work on the side or something like that. Anyway, uh, maybe this will uh, help you guys persuade the customers to allow you to remove the old tack strip and put more down. Not necessarily just to rack up money, but for the customer's sake, for their benefit for their uh, longevity of their product that you're installing it is very important that the tack strip is placed in the proper way so you can get a proper stretch and cause their carpet to last
for many years to come, okay? Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, FBSB is out.